What's up guys, Stratagus11 here. Uh, today, I'm going to show you, I'm um, going to walk you through how to rebuild a top end on a KX250F. Uh, first step is, you're going to want to clear space, and you're going to want to take your cylinder, and we're going to start honing it, and before you want to hone it, you're going to want to inspect the cylinder to see if there's any uh, major gouges or scratches and if you can feel them with your finger then um, they're too deep and not beyond uh, service limits and you're going to need a new cylinder but this one's fine so you can see we uh, uh, owned it and uh, you can't tell by the camera but it made a cross hatch and uh, that's going to be seating the new cylinder and here we are with a bucket of a uh, warm little bit of soap in there and you just want to take it around and clean off the cylinder and make sure there's no uh, leftover residue or uh, extra shavings from the cylinder and you're going to wipe that around a little bit and uh, clean off the cylinder uh, next step is to uh, take some Lucas Oil assembly lube put it on a Make sure it's a clean towel and uh, you're going to want to run around the inside of the cylinder and that'll uh, pick up any of the leftover um, residue or uh, any of the shavings and it'll clean out the cylinder and you're going to want to do that until there are no more shavings on the towel. After uh, we've honed the cylinder, we're going to start uh, installing the piston rings and that is one piston ring and then you have the uh, oil ring and the spacers uh, I like to start off with the oil ring and uh, most of the rings have a uh, letter on it and you're gonna want to make sure that is pointing up Next, uh, we're going to take some assembly lube, apply a light coat on the rings before installation so we can avoid the dry start when we go to start up the engine for the first time. And when applying rings, we're going to start by applying one side. Oil ring isn't too bad, it's pretty stretchy, but uh, when it's on this, we're going to want to make sure that it's not overlapping or anything that will damage the cylinder. Next we're going to start with the bottom spacer and uh, that's going to go in, that's going to go in by one side first, that goes in the bottom and then we're going to just gently push around to make sure it's in the notch and it is seated and it is not getting caught on the oil ring. And for uh, all the spacing of these rings, for this piston, it is, uh, I believe, 10 to 20 millimeters apart, and uh, that'll help the oil flow. It'll vary depending on uh, the uh, engine, the bike, and the uh, piston, so refer to the instructions that come with the piston for that. And then uh, install the uh, top oil ring spacer and we're gonna install that the same way as the other one put it in the notch put one end in the notch and uh, slowly work it around and make sure it's in the notch and seat it in uh, installing the uh, sir clip can be a little challenging uh, basically put one end in sorry my fingers are in the way put one end in and then um, to make a tool for it can be a lot easier but I use a screwdriver and push the other end down into the notch and you're going to want to make sure that it is uh, seated in the notch. And uh, here we are going to install or uh, apply some assembly lube to the uh, wrist pin. We're not quite ready to install that yet but uh, we are going to put some lube on that make sure we avoid that dry start. And uh, apply some more assembly lube to the uh, piston where the wrist pin will be sliding in. Uh, now we're going to install the piston into the connecting rod and uh, 
When you're doing this, you're going to want to make sure that there's no play in the connecting rod. If there is, you're going to need to uh, split the cases and uh, replace the rod. But in this case, this rod's good. And uh, when installing the piston on this model, and I believe on most of them, there's a uh, arrow that faces toward the exhaust side, so you're going to want to make sure you have that pointed towards. Uh, you're going to want to make sure that you check with the uh, instructions of the piston just for uh, confirmation of that. But uh, now we're going to slide in the wrist pin as I already did and uh, install the uh, circlip and you're going to want to have paper towels around uh, the connecting rod as I have to uh, make sure that nothing falls down and you're not going to have to split the cases. And you're uh, sorry about my head there. Um, you're going to want to make sure that the uh, uh, sir clip is seated in. When you put it in, you'll hear a little snap, and you'll make that'll tell you that it's in. Next step is uh, making sure that the uh, rings are all lined up, and you're gonna want to take out your paper towels or towel you have in there, and making sure you don't uh, have anything drop down in there. And now uh, we're gonna want to make sure we install our gasket as you can see there uh, I already have the uh, surface cleaned off and prepped and ready to go so uh, that you get a better seal and there I'm inserting the two dial pins uh, to make sure that the gasket does not move around and the cylinder uh, seats properly or sits in properly uh, as uh, off camera there I'm uh, putting some loose soil assembly lube in so that the uh, piston goes in a little easier and uh, once again, like the hundredth time, avoid that dry start that can happen. Uh, basically, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you're going to want to put the piston in make sure you get the uh, cam chain or uh, cam chain guide going in that slot there too. And when you're putting in the piston, you're going to want to compress the rings with your fingers as much as you can while sliding down, gently sliding down the uh, cylinder, being careful not to uh, rip or uh, break any of the rings. It's very easy to do, so make sure you compress the rings and uh, very gently slide in the cylinder. Once you have that, you'll be able to tell it'll go in pretty easily once you get the rings compressed and in the cylinder. Then you're gonna push down. And line up the dial pins with the holes. Just like so. And I forgot to pull my wire up through. It has the cam chain on, don't forget to do that. Push the uh, cylinder all the way down on the dial pins. Make sure it's not getting caught on anything and it properly seats down all the way. You might have to tap it a little bit, but you don't want to get too crazy with it or else you'll damage, damage the rings possibly or something else. And you'll be back to uh, square one. Here you can see uh, it wasn't going down all the way, so I picked it back up and now it goes down all the way. And uh, we're going to install the one screw and uh, definitely put some Loctite on that. And uh, from here on out, all the bolts will be torqued to factory settings. This bolt, I believe, is 7.2 uh, foot pounds, but it varies once again for all manufacturers. And we're going to install.
insert these two dial pins. Make sure you don't uh, force anything. Now we're going to install the gasket and uh, once again make sure your gasket surface is uh, nice and clean so that you get a better seal. And at this point you're going to want to install your other cam chain guide. It'll lock right into place. You'll know when it's in there. Now we're going to install the uh, top end. Once again make sure you feed the uh, cam chain through with the wire. If that's what you're doing like I have and along with uh, both of the uh, cam chain guides. You're going to line those up with the dowel pins and uh, push down and secure it on. Make sure you're not getting caught on it, possibly the wire or anything else. After we've done that, we're going to install the uh, valve shims and uh, make sure these valves are good, but uh, you might want to check your valve clearance. Um, and these do go a certain way, so when you take it apart, if you're going to use the same ones, make sure you put them the uh, correct way, up is up and down is down, and uh, each shim goes in the uh, same place. These are just the buckets, press those down, pretty self-explanatory on this part. It's a uh, assembly lube on. Same thing on the other side. Good install the shims. Along with the buckets, head covers, whatever you want to call them. Obviously we're going to put some uh, more assembly lube on those because that is where the camshafts sit on top of and in that little ridge there, that ridge too as well. Next we're going to want to install your uh, head bolts uh, along with uh, we're going to put some anti-seize on those bolts since they are uh, getting into extreme temperatures and we don't want anything to uh, seize up in the threads and not be able to remove those so a uh, good bit of anti-seize on the threads will do it not too much uh, probably just a little and uh, we're just going to want to put these in loose for now so we get all four in. Same process, rubbing anti-seize on, on all four, not just the inside two, all four. You know, put those in, make sure you have the uh, copper or metal crush, crush washer attached to. That is important. You don't want to lose that or drop it down in the case. So be careful when installing these four bolts that you don't lose the brush washer and just, as I said before you're going to install these very loose just a couple turns and the last bolt and, and tighten that a little bit and now we're going to tighten it Now take your ratchet and tighten it in a crisscross pattern. 
as I said, uh, we're going to tighten these bolts in a crisscross pattern. And we're not going to tighten one more than the other. We're just going to get it snug. And uh, we'll probably come around two or three times until they are all tight. You really want to make sure you tighten these evenly or else it could mess up the uh, seal of the gasket or something inside of the uh, engine. And we're going to go back over again, tighten it in a crisscross pattern. Now we are going to take our torque wrench and torque these down to factory settings. Uh, which on these, this Kawasaki, I believe it is uh, uh, I forget, maybe 60 pounds, 68 pounds. Uh, don't hold me to that, I, I can't remember. But uh, I know you can download most any manuals, service manuals online for free, so don't go out and buy the a manual for $68 on eBay when they are for free. You can find them by just searching blah 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 service manual on Google or Blink or whatever the hell you use for your search engine. Uh, same thing goes for these. We're going to tighten it down in a crisscross pattern. Not tightening one more than the other. We're going to tighten it till it uh, gets torque. I had to improvise a little bit. My engine was sliding around. Uh, I don't really recommend doing this because you might make the uh, top end move out of line, but uh, have someone hold the engine for you while you tighten it down probably be a smarter thing to do. After you're done, done torquing the uh, four bolts, it is uh, time to install the camshafts. Uh, you're going to want to start by uh, applying some assembly lube to the uh, ridges where the camshafts will sit. This uh, leak of soil assembly lube works very well. It's uh, pretty sticky, so it, uh, it's nice it kind of holds the camshafts where they need to be while you set the other ones in place. And uh, when installing camshafts, you're going to want to start with the uh, exhaust side. Uh, and that's the one that's obviously closer to the exhaust. And uh, depending on your make and model, uh, you're going to want to make sure you're going to want to line up the, uh, there should be two dots on two marks on the camshafts and on this model I'll show you later when it's all done how they line up but uh, they should be facing opposite of each other so for instance this mark on this camshaft should be facing towards the exhaust side and on this other camshaft coming in the uh, other mark should be facing opposite of that on the opposite side I will show you a uh, photo of that later on, just to clarify for this model, but for other models sometimes they point towards each other, uh, really depends, but uh, for this step you're going to want to make sure that it's set at top dead center, so when you do line up the uh, dots, the uh, factory marks, uh, that it, it is top dead center, and that's uh, the timing will be correct and uh, as you can tell it takes a little practice lining lining them up with the uh, chain just be patient and you'll get it eventually after a couple tries but our uh, most critical part is making sure that the piss is a top dead center and here's the uh, photo I was talking about. Uh, if you can tell on the left side here with the exhaust, uh, on the left uh, dip right before it goes down, you can tell 
you can see there is a little dot and then right above it uh, in the top of the cam shaft exhaust there is uh, another dot uh, that dot should be parallel with the uh, the top end case as it is and as we move over to the intake camshaft same thing uh, just opposite they're both pointing away from each other but they're both parallel with each other and with the uh, cylinder that's just for this model so you're going to want to check with the uh, manufacturer on this for how the camshaft should be and this is how they should be at top dead center um, now that the uh, cams are properly placed and it is at top dead center we're going to want to put some more assembly loop on the camshafts before we install the retainer clips and cam caps and next we are installing the dowel pins so it is easier to install the cam cap it's uh, helpful sometimes just to use needle nose goes in a little easier sometimes Now that the dial pins are inserted, we are going to take the uh, cam cap and put the retaining clip inside of the notch of the cam cap and be careful uh, when we flip it around that the retaining clip does not fall out but the nice thing with the Lucas Oil assembly loop, it's thick enough that it keeps that from moving around and we're going to push that on to the dowel pins making sure that the retaining clip drops into and seats into the camshaft notch and gently tap down with a uh, rubber mallet just to make sure that it is all the way on the camshaft and in the dowel pins. Uh, now we are installing the uh, cam cap bolts and finger tight these down and uh, that silver bolt uh, does have to go in the same place and just to make sure I put every bolt back in the same place just to avoid any uh, problems that might happen if one bolt's longer than the other. Now we're moving on to the exhaust side. Same thing, put some assembly lube on to the uh, cam cap. take our uh, retaining clip, put it in the notch as uh, my poor cameraman skills kind of misses that but there it is. Seats in there and does not move thanks to our leak soil assembly loop and uh, I almost forgot to put the dowels in. That would have been great. So uh, carefully slide those in. Needle nose pliers really helped me out. Last dial pin goes in. Now it's time for the uh, last cam cap with the retaining clip already in. And we're going to put that over and onto the dial pins and make sure that retaining clip seats into the uh, camshaft. There you can see me pushing through, making sure it seats. Now that it's all the way down and the cam chain camshafts do not move back and forth, they are centered. We can uh, make sure it's all the way down again. Now we can uh, proceed to installing the four bolts. Once again, I installed every bolt where it went originally, especially the silver bolt that does need to go back where it came from because it is longer and we're going to hand tight these down just with our fingers 
and uh, and we're gonna uh, tighten these down in a crisscross pattern so that it evenly tight gets tight and one side's not tighter than the other and that it is stays even. So just tighten these loosely down, not too tight because we do have to torque these to factory spec which is I believe uh, 30 something or 16, I can't remember. Don't hold me to that either, you'll have to check with your uh, service manual. But uh, still tightening these down very slowly and crisscross pattern. And here we are tightening, torquing all 8 bolts to factory spec in a crisscross manner once again to avoid uh, tightening one side more than the other having a uneven cam cap, unlevel cam cap. Now it's time to install the cam chain tensioner uh, on the KX250F you uh, need to take out the center bolt and put in the uh, take out the center bolt and slide in uh, whatever whatever that is called I'm not quite sure but we're going to slide that in and uh, Make sure to use Loctite and we're going to put in the two side bolts. My hand ever moves, you can see. There, you can see uh, I installed the two side bolts and we're going to tighten those down, of course, uh, to factory spec, which you'll have to check in your service manual. Tighten those two down, now we can install the uh, tensioner after we tighten it some more to factory spec. Here, uh, behind my hand, there it is, uh, installing the cam chain tensioner. And we are, of course, going to tighten that down to factory spec. Now that the, uh, you can tell the cam chain is tight and there's no tension on it, we are going to need to apply a layer of silicon from that point down into the groove all the way down kind of doesn't have to be even right now we're going to spread it out with our finger and we go up top and back down the groove and back up to the same place as the other side now this is a uh, heat silicon uh, for ATVs or bikes you can find it at Home Depot or any auto parts store just as long as it is able to treat a uh, high heat and take your finger and spread it evenly making a nice silicon seal carry uh, be careful not to get any on cam shafts or anything because I would imagine that probably wouldn't be good and it wouldn't look too good either it wouldn't look very professional so I'm just gonna clean this up a bit and uh, fast forward to where it looks a little better uh, here we are, I can see I really spread it out a little bit, I probably took some off too. Uh, just cleaning it up with my finger and wiping my finger on a paper towel just to make sure that it looks clean and professional because I like to think that I'm a professional, but I'm far from it. Uh, now it's time to install the head cover, head gasket, whatever you want to call it. And uh, you can re reuse this gasket as long as it's not uh, too messed up. That's part of the reason why we put that silk on there, just to give it an extra seal in front of the camshafts. Now, uh, installing the uh, two gaskets where the head, head bolts go. Uh, I'm gonna put these in hand tight. as I'm doing now, just hand tight real loose and uh, take our T-handle, tighten them down evenly I'm back with the T-handle, tightening these down 
evenly, not too tight. And uh, of course, we're going to tighten these down to factory settings. And uh, you can do this whole process with the uh, engine still on the bike, but uh, I'm doing a whole rebuild on my bike so I figured I'd just take it out and uh, rebuild it out of the out of the frame which uh, I think is easier but personal preference I guess we don't have all the time to rebuild it out of the engine and take it all out then just do it inside the engine just be careful not to get any dirt or debris down in the case when you're doing it but uh, now time to install the spark plug Tighten that down, of course, factory settings. And uh, when you install the uh, that layer of uh, silicon, you're gonna make sure you let let it dry for at least 24 hours before you go ride. If your engine's still in the uh, in the frame, you're gonna want to let that sit just a little bit. Make sure it dry dries. There we are installing the. Spark plug, I'm gonna put the spark plug cover back on. Snap it back into place. And uh, now it's time to install the uh, timing covers. Usually two two covers, a big cover and a small cover. Uh, just tighten those with the screwdriver, making sure it's not too tight. You don't strip those out, but slim enough that they won't fall out. And once you tighten those up, you have uh, successfully rebuilt your engine. Thanks guys for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, if, you, if you liked this video, put a thumbs up. If you don't like it, put a thumbs down. Comment what you did like about it. Comment what you didn't like about it. Uh, I know some of my camera angles suck, but uh, if you liked it, subscribe to me. I have plenty more tutorials, how to change tires. Uh, linkages and uh, some cool riding videos if you have any ideas for me for new videos just comment or uh, send me an email uh, I'd love to hear some comments but uh, thanks again